All right, guys, so here's the main menu. As you can see, we have quite a few different functions. So starting up here at the top, you can see we have our universal key. That is to generate our universal I keys. Now, I will get a little bit deeper into these because these universal I keys are actually really awesome and they can save you a ton of money, especially when it comes to having to inventory keys. But we'll get into that a little bit later in the video. Next up, you can see we have reading and cloning, which is basically a function that allows you to read the chip inside of the key and also clone it. Over here, we have a transponder function, which we can use to generate transponders. Over here, we have a frequency detection where we can test our remotes. Down here, we have the emo function, which is the immobilizer function. That's what we're gonna use in order to program the keys. Then we have some more special functions down here. We'll get into that in a minute. But let me start off by selecting reading and cloning. So basically, let's go in here and we're gonna read a key. It's instructing us to put either a chip into the chip hole right here or put your key into this hole. So right now I have this key for a Chevy Cruze. Let's go ahead and stick it into the slot right here. And then we're gonna hit read. It's reading the transponder inside the key. And here we can see all the information about this key. Up here you can see we have a chip model. We have an emo type. It's telling us it's a high tag 2 ID46. It's giving us a transponder ID, the lock status, which basically tells you whether or not the key is locked. This key is programmed to a vehicle. So right now, if you wanted to try to reuse this key on another vehicle, you would first have to unlock it, which means you'd have to open it up, take the circuit board out, use a special function in the key tool along with this cable, like I mentioned before, unlock the chip, then you can reprogram it to another vehicle. Now, as far as cloning the chip in this key, basically you drop this in there and we're gonna hit clone. Now this is a transponder 46. So whenever you clone these keys, it does require that you do a password calculation. So what the tool instructs you to do is put the antenna of this tool up against the ignition coil. I'm referring to the antenna around the keyhole where you stick the key in. It's going to detect the coil around the ignition. Then it's going to calculate the password and allow you to write it to a clone chip. Now here's where it's asking you to put the tool up against the ignition coil. You can see that's the key going into the keyhole. And essentially, every time you insert the key and turn the key on, there's a signal that's being passed back and forth between the chip and also the antenna. The Autel is going to pick that signal up. It's going to calculate the password. Then it's going to allow you to clone it to a chip. So we've got the key tool pressed up against the ignition coil. I'm going to go ahead and stick the key in, turn the ignition on. And we may have to do this a few times. So key off, take the key out, put the key back in, turn it on, do it again. Basically, just do this until it tells you whether or not it acquired the signal. There we have it, it is now calculating. As you can see, it calculated our password. So that was just a brief overview of the cloning function of this tool. Next up, I wanted to show you guys the transponder function. So if we click on that, you can see up here at the top, we have transponder generation. So this is where you would generate a transponder. So if we go down here, let's say a Ford 4D63, if you wanted to generate one of these chips, of course, you would have to buy whatever chip works with this tool. So if we back out, this second option here is pretty cool. This is a transponder simulation. And so basically what this allows you to do is use the tool to simulate a key chip. Now moving back to the home page, let's go ahead and click on frequency detection. This is something very useful, especially if you have a remote that's not working and you're not sure if the problem is with the remote or with the vehicle, you can just use this function to test the frequency of the remote. So I'm gonna go ahead and unlock this. You guys can see how it just registered the frequency and it tells us what frequency the key is. So I'm gonna click it again. You guys can see this remote is 315 megahertz. Now we're gonna go into special functions. And here's where you're gonna find a lot of cool different things that you can do. First of all, you can do key unlocking. Again, if you guys have a key, an OEM key that was previously locked to another vehicle, you can use this tool to renew that key. So here we're in the Dodge menu. Let's just pick any of these. You can see they give you a little diagram right here of how to connect to the circuit board using the supplied cable. You basically have to solder to the points on the board then you hit unlock and it will unlock the key. Now, another function that you can use this for is unlocking Toyota smart keys. This function is very easy to do. You don't have to open the key. There's no soldering involved. You basically just stick the key into the slot up here, hit unlock and it will unlock the key. Now, let me warn you guys, Toyota keys starting from 2018, 2019 and up, a lot of those keys cannot be unlocked. I know this personally because I ran into one on a 2020 where I used the key tool to unlock the key. And even when I used the key tool to read the key again, it showed that it was unlocked. However, it would not program back into the vehicle. On those newer Toyotas, once the keys are locked, they're locked for good. Another function that you can do here is you can do button adjustment, which basically means that if you generate a universal I key and program it to the vehicle, and for whatever reason, the button arrangement is not correct. Let's say when you push the lock button, the doors unlock. And when you push the unlock button, the doors lock. And you need to switch those button arrangements. All you got to do is take the key, stick it into the slot, select the button adjustment, and you can switch them around however you like. Okay, so I have another universal I key that has a battery in it. 
And so we're gonna slide it in here. We'll hit retry. It's detecting the universal remote. And here we have our button functions. Again, you can see that the unlock icon is unlock. The lock icon is lock. Remote start is remote start. The trunk button is the trunk and the panic is the panic. So again, you can go in here and you can move them around. So let's say uh, that you wanted to move the unlock button and make it the lock. You could just select lock and then you wanted to make the lock button the unlock button. You can go in there and select unlock. And now all you have to do is confirm writing and this will write that button adjustment into the key. You can see it's writing it right now. And now you can see that the unlock icon is now the lock button and the lock icon is now the unlock button. You can also do combination buttons where if there's another function, let's say like a convertible top and your key doesn't have that button, you could do a combination where in this case, if you push the remote start and the trunk button at the same time, you can make it work for let's say a convertible top. Lots of really cool stuff that you can do with these universal I keys. And just as easy as it was to change the button configurations, you can just as easily restore the initial value by just clicking here and it restores everything back to the way it was. Now, another cool special function that you can use is this ignition coil detection. This is useful when you have a vehicle that's a no start and you're not sure whether the problem is in the key or the antenna coil on the vehicle. So if we select ignition coil detection, all you gotta do is take the antenna on top of the tool right here, put it up against the antenna on the vehicle, put the key in, turn it, and see whether or not you're getting a signal. Very useful to have. Some other special functions that you have are these Mazda ID49 smart key warning lamp clearings. Basically on some Mazdas, when you program a key to them, if the key is not the exact or correct FCC ID or the correct button arrangement, or sometimes if it's an aftermarket key, the vehicle may still start and run with the key, but you're gonna get a light on the dash. This function is used to help you get rid of that light. There's also a function for the Nissan and Infiniti, and there's another universal key bot adjustment. I'm not exactly sure what that does, guys, but if you need it, it's there. Now moving into the immobilizer side, I'm not gonna go too much into detail right now because I am gonna be showing you how to program a key on a Nissan later on in this video. But basically when you come in here, you can see that you have all different manufacturers that you can program keys for. Everything from domestic, import, Europeans, the list goes on and on. If you guys are not sure about compatibility, you can go onto the Autel website and they do have a compatibility chart where you can go in there, put the tool that you're working with, the make and model, and see what you can and cannot do with it. We also have a selection here for automatically identifying the VIN. Now I will mention that the tool works best as long as you're connected to the internet. So wherever you're going to program keys, make sure you take a Wi-Fi hotspot with you. A lot of times I just use my phone as a hotspot and that usually works good enough. 